Welcome to Science with Steph, the show where I think way too much about the world around us and then share the best bits with you guys. This week is a 100 sub special, so I'm going to be delving into my own world, talking a little bit about my background, why maths doesn't suck, why physics is the best and why I chose the career path I did. I'm also going to talk a little bit about why I started this channel and where I hope to see this channel go in the future. So I hope you'll allow me to indulge myself a wee bit and talk about myself. So what made me want to study science in the first place? Well, at high school, I wasn't really ever that into science. I was into everything, you know, art, music, languages. And I remember at that stage when I had to start narrowing down what I could choose, I really struggled because I just wanted to take everything. So for my standard grades, which is GCSE, I suppose, in English talk or the exams you take when you're 15, 16 for anyone international, I ended up picking two languages, two arts and two sciences plus maths and English. So I had a really jam-packed schedule and I remember enjoying everything. In fact, this was the sort of age when maths was starting to be a bit more complicated, replacing numbers with letters and no one could understand why we were replacing numbers with letters, but I had an amazing teacher then. This is a shout out to Mrs. Martin who was the best teacher ever. But what she did is ended up just making us just rep maths over and over and over. And it really taught me that maths is like any sort of skill or sport where actually if you just rep it hundreds of times over it will just click and anyone who tells me that they're not good at maths or maths is really rubbish I just tell them like literally just practice that's all maths is is just practicing something over and over and it will click it was around this age sort of 16 years old where I went on an amazing holiday to Orlando and I went to Disney World I went to Universal Studios and I decided at that age that I wanted to design roller coasters I mean, there was a little part of me that had also decided that I wanted to be a Disney princess, but um, being tall and being really big meant that that probably wasn't going to be an option. So roller coaster engineer, that's a good plan B, I could do that. So I suppose a combination of like having something that I was really passionate about mixed in with actually decent teachers at that age made me realise that science and maths was a really interesting thing to take. So I carried on doing that for the last two years of school before choosing to do physics and maths at uni. I always did fine at school. I never really worked all that hard. Sorry, Mrs. Martin. And it wasn't until I was actually at uni that I needed to work a bit harder to actually pass my exams. And it was also that time that I realized that I wanted to take something that I was more interested in rather than just repping through stuff. It was, by, it was by my second year that I realized I didn't want to do the more pure math side of things. And I wanted to do the more astrophysics, space related stuff which was really interesting at the time. Jump forward a year to the summer after my second year and this is when I hit the degree wall. I was volunteering in Bangladesh teaching English as a foreign language and I was there with some amazing people who were studying international development and how to build communities in developing nations and I was the only sort of scientist and physicist there. I just hit, I just hit that wall of why am I studying physics? Is that even gonna help people? Like, why am I even doing this? I want to do a degree that is gonna benefit humanity, you know? But that was also the time when I was learning kind of firsthand exactly the, the consequences of climate change. I heard a shocking statistic back then that if we don't do anything about climate change, Bangladesh will not exist in 50 years time. That was horrendous. And that to me was like, we could do anything we want to help educate people and to get them into working jobs and to help the farmers and to help empower women but actually if the country's not even going to exist in 50 years what even is the even point even and that was when it all just clicked for me i knew exactly what i wanted to do i wanted to work in renewable energy i wanted to work in a field where I was actually combating climate change. So at that point, I sort of tailored my degree. I picked up some more renewable energy focused stuff, some more climate focused stuff, and I dropped the quantum stuff and stuff that was maybe not so relevant. And do you know what? That's the amazing thing about maths and especially physics. You can use the tools that you've learned to apply to every single area of science and you could pretty much pick up most stuff with a physics degree, whatever you're interested in. So after I graduated, I did a postgrad, but this was more industrial, where I was actually working for an energy company, doing my thesis at the same time. I was learning about pretty cool stuff called airborne wind. 
I think I've already done a video about that and you can click the card. But more importantly, I was learning about how to create renewable energy at a low cost. This still fascinates me. And I'm now working for a company that are at the absolute leading edge in technology in offshore renewable energy. And it's great, it's really interesting. I feel like I'm benefiting people. And I've got a lot of freedom to work in projects that I've got areas of expertise in, especially airborne wind and going back to the satellite stuff, which was what I was first at uni for. That's me on my, on my sort of academic, personal level. I would say my biggest influences are probably my dad, who's an engineer and bless, bless his wee cotton socks, isn't the best at describing science to kids. So even as a five-year-old, I'd be asking, you know, why are the streetlights orange? And he's there trying to describe the, the spectral output of sodium to me. Uh, but you know, it caught my attention because I had never understood anything he was talking about and I was desperate to understand actually what he was talking about. Again, I mentioned my maths teacher, but also my physics teacher at higher was a um, huge inspiration to me. And I hope that maybe one day I might become a teacher. I love where I'm working right now, but I'd love to take that applied industry knowledge and teach it to kids as well. As part of all that, when I was doing my postgrad, I decided to sign up to this thing called I'm a scientist, get me out of here. This is a great opportunity for kids all across the UK from right up in Orkney, right down to Cornwall. The kids get to live chat with real life scientists, asking all sorts of questions about the work that they do, why is the sky blue, what's your favorite animal, to what's it like to be a scientist. I didn't get in straight away, but actually earlier this year, they asked me if I wanted to be part of the climate zone. I said yes, I thought it would be a great opportunity to talk to kids and talk a little bit about what I do. I had no idea that by the end of the two weeks I would have one. So I had a great time talking to loads of kids and answering loads of questions and having manic half hour chats where I was the only scientist in a zone with about 40 kids all asking me questions at once. And as part of my winnings, I got to spend 500 pounds on something called STEM engagement. So STEM is science, technology, engineering, and maths, and engagement is connecting with you guys. So I have always been a massive fan of YouTube. I'm part of one or two YouTube fan clubs. Shout out to the SCB Discord. I thought, why not start a YouTube channel? I've been absolutely inspired by some of those Discordians, especially Jordan, who started her own YouTube channel. And I thought, I'll just go for it. I bought a camera, I bought a mic, and I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll give this a shot. And so seeing as I've got 100 subscribers, obviously I hope I'm doing something right. I'm always open to suggestions and comments about what I could do better or more ideas of what I could do in the future. But where, where do I see this going in the future? Well, I hope I can do more practical things. I hope that I can do some experiments on camera if I was confident enough to do that. I hope I can do more things that engage people, maybe competitions or giveaways. And I would love to visit more places and people and showcase some of the amazing science that's going on all around us. But especially what I would love to do is actually get kids excited about science. So I hope you continue watching. I hope this channel continues to grow. Share it with any kids you think would be interested in this stuff continue to give me feedback and yeah thank you to all of you who's watching at home i hope you enjoyed this episode of science with steph i bring out new videos every friday so if you want to watch my last video you can click here or if you consider subscribing you can click here thanks everyone bye